Hey guys, welcome back to another book related video. I thought I would do something fun and this is a tag. I wasn't necessarily tagged by this person, but this person thought of a letter to tag um, everybody by the letter of this letter. <laughs> and it goes with the first letter of your first name. And this person chose M, which is the letter of my first name. This is the reread, rewrite, or burn tag. This is a tag that was, I think, created by Connor O'Brien. I thought I would give him a little shout out because I do watch his channel and he's a pretty cool guy and he does read a lot of fiction and fantasy and I really like all the books he does read and I do look forward to reading some of those in the future. So I have my little Jack Skellington cup right here. Let's get started with the first one. Let's mix these up kind of good. All right. So the first one will be, okay. Number one is On Stranger Tides by Tim Powers. Number two, Interview with the Vampire by Anne Rice. And The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. All right, so I'll start with the first one that I know that this is pretty much one of my favorite books of all time. And this will be my reread because Interview with the Vampire is probably one of the best books ever written and one of the best books to read before you die. So I choose Interview with the Vampire as my reread. The next one is my rewrite and this is perfect right here. Um, On Stranger Tides by Tim Powers. This one I really couldn't get into. Um, I don't know what it was about this book. I was reading it during the um, Booktubeathon last year and I couldn't really understand what was going on because I was comparing it to the movie by um, Hollywood. It was very hard to read because I was comparing it like that watching the movie and reading the book. I was like this is not what I read in the book and this is not what I see in the movie so yeah that was kind of hard so I was like I'm gonna put the movie aside and read it for what it is and that's what I did and I ended up enjoying it more than I thought I did so there's that one this one is kind of easy The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien hate me all you want but I did not enjoy this book whatsoever I this is my thing I tell everybody that asks me about this movie, book, whatever, I don't see how you make three movies three hours long and let me just show you how small this book is if I could find it up here. Okay, I found it. I don't see how you make a book like this, this small, it has how many pages? 300 pages into a three movie set I don't get it three hours long for each movie it's very tiny how do you make three movies out of this I don't get it I don't get it I'm sorry let's just get past this because I did not enjoy this one I gave this one like a 2.3 stars on Goodreads if I could do that so um, yeah not one of my favorite books ever All right, so the first one is The Vampire Lestat. The next one, ooh, Dracula by Bram Stoker. And ooh, this is an interesting one. A Game of Thrones book one, which is above my head. You can't even see it. So I thought it was close right here. All right, so on to the second one. Dracula would be my burn book. This one, I don't know what it was about this book. I think it was way too long. Um, some people have mixed reviews on this book, but what I'm finding is it's way too long and it goes on and on and on. They didn't get to the point until the end. 
And that's what I'm finding in this book that I'm actually reading right now, but I am enjoying it, let me tell you. Um, so yeah, Dracula by Bram Stoker. This is my burn book. This one is easy. This one is my reread. This is a Game of Thrones book one by J uh, George R. R. Martin. Reread for sure. But I will be reading the fourth book in the series um, this coming February with Magic of Books, one of my friends here on BookTube. If you want to check her out, I'll leave her link down below here so you go check out her, her channel. The Vampire Lestat, I kind of feel bad about this one by Anne Rice. This one would have to be my rewrite just because when I read it, I didn't understand why certain parts were in it and I don't, I don't know if I just didn't understand what was going on, but this book was all about him and I figure now the book that I'm reading will be, it kind of feels like it's the second part to interview with the vampire. That's kind of how I see it because that's where it leaves off. And the vampire Lestat is its own book, I guess. That's kind of how it feels to me. And what I'm seeing now is that this book right behind me, if I can get it, this book, Prince Lestat is kind of like a continuation of, you know, it seems that Lestat has been um, gone for a while and he hasn't made his presence known. And um, Anne Rice has been saying that she wasn't going to push his character into talking to her and then once he does make himself present that he'll never shut up and she just keeps writing and writing and writing and writing and writing. And there is going to be a second part to this book, which I haven't read this one yet, but um, this is the first one. This is Prince Lestat. The second one is going to be called Blood Paradise, and it comes out, um, I think, next year. I'm not too sure, but I haven't read this one, and I'm reading book four because I want to get to this so bad right now. All right, so here are the last three. I don't even see why I have to do this, but... I'll do it anyway. Okay, so here's the last three. Number one, Under the Dome by Stephen King. Let me show it. Under the Dome by Stephen King. If I Stay by Gail Foreman. And the last one, The Lightning Thief by Rick Riordan. This one is kind of easy for me. I'll start with Under the Dome. This is definitely a huge book, but this for sure is a reread for me. This is just one of the most amazing, amazing books I've ever read. So since this book is a really big book, I'm not intimidated by big books. That's kind of my thing. Every time I get a really big book, I'm really excited to get to it. And I feel reading a small book doesn't do too much for me. And right now the book that I am reading is 400 and some pages. So um, this one is actually bigger. Under the Dome is 1,074 pages. There you go. And I know that because I just remembered it. It's just one of those things. It's just that good. Um, there is a lot of different things that go on in this book. I'm not going to give any spoilers away, but this is a reread for me. Hopefully I can reread it pretty soon because I really enjoyed it. Hopefully not this year, because I want to get a lot of other books read, but Under the Dome is probably one of the best books I've ever read. If I Stay by Gail Foreman, this would be my rewrite. Let's just say there's some pieces in this book. It was good. It's my first contemporary read that I have ever read, and I just wanted to give it a try. I saw the movie coming out. I read it for the book Tubathon that just passed and I really, really enjoyed this book. To be honest, it's probably one of the best books I've ever read too, but, but I wouldn't put it up there with all these other books that I do actually really enjoy. And those are the reasons that I do like those books, but this book is good on a different um, surface. I just, it's one of those books that you're following the character you're seeing what she's seeing, but it has a whole other atmosphere that contemporary books have. Sure, it was a girly girl kind of read, but I did enjoy it. Um, but it was different. I liked all the um, references to 
rock and, and metal music in there. Um, Alice Cooper was one of them, but he's not in um, the actual movie. I think like the audio. So yeah, um, there you go. If I Stay by Gail Foreman. Still one of the best books I've, I've read in a while. Um, last year? Yeah, last year for Booktubeathon. So really good book. I still have to read where she went and I do have it on my shelf. You can probably see it. I don't think so. Oh yeah, right here. Where she went, right behind me, so. Oh yeah, you can't see it, okay. But yeah, If I Stay by Gail Foreman. Now here's a book that you're probably all gonna hate me for. This book was really slow and it is one of the slowest books in the series so far. Just the first part. And that is, don't hate me for this, please. I don't mean to do this, but that's the way it came up, so. The Lightning Thief by Rick Riordan. There you go. This book, I had a lot of problems with it. I did enjoy the series, but it's one of those books that you just, I don't know, there was parts where it was good, and then there was parts where it was slow. And I was like, why does this have to be in there? Why is this happening? What does this mean for the rest of the story? Um, it is probably the slowest book in the series, like I said, and it does get better. By book two, um, it's already going into another place um, off the city where um, Percy is, and that's where the story continues. And it does get better by book three, which is my favorite in the series. I just feel it has a whole other atmosphere to it. Um, when I read it at, at least and the fourth book is a lot better it's a lot faster and then by book five it goes kind of slow again just because it is kind of the the book um, cliffhanger because there is a lot more books in the series but now the series has ended I still have to get the rest of the books in the series of the rest of them and I can't wait to pick up the next books in the new series that Rick Riordan has put out. So yeah, The Lightning Thief by Rick Riordan. One of the slowest books I've ever read, but it is still good. I'll give it that. So yeah, if you guys like this video, please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one, guys. All the links for my other friends that are mentioned in this video will be down below. Um, Connor will be down below his link, and my friend Stacy from Magic of Books will be down below too. So. Until next time, guys, I'll see you later. Bye.